Did you know? The flow of waste through your facility can have a major impact on infection control. Regulated medical waste, also known as RMW, is generated all across healthcare facilities, everywhere, from patient rooms to operating rooms, ICUs, and laboratories. During the life cycle of medical waste in a hospital, it's typically touched a minimum of four times before reaching the loading dock. With each touch increasing safety and infection control risks, we focus on reducing the number of touches. Let's first take a look at a traditional waste journey, starting in a patient room. In this example, Waste Management Touchpoint 1 occurs when an environmental services professional removes and consolidates waste into a larger container. Notice that soiled containers remain in the patient room. In this scenario, environmental service professionals go from room to room, decanting waste from one bin to another and transferring it through the hospital. In the process, it raises questions around infection control. Are gloves being taken on and off? What doors are being regularly touched? In the second touch point, waste is moved to a soiled utility room where it is further consolidated from transport carts to stationary medical waste bins. Already, there are important considerations to be making about infection control that can and should be covered in your facility's standard operating procedures. Hand hygiene is particularly important because each time red bags are consolidated, manual handling is required, thereby increasing risk of cross-contamination as well as exposure to spills or incorrectly disposed sharps. That's why reducing infection risks starts with asking the right questions. Who cleans the bins? What hand hygiene protocols are observed? How is cross-contamination controlled? Keep those questions in mind as we return to our waste journey. We've now reached traditional waste management touch point three, which occurs when the medical waste bin is moved to the loading dock to undergo further waste consolidation. Remember our questions on infection control best practices? Those all still apply here. Now that we're at the loading dock, let's consider the three pathways waste can take from here. Regardless of which of the three pathways are taken at this point, each will represent touch point four, the final disposal of the waste into its transport-ready containment. The first option is to take waste directly from a medical waste bin and place it into a roll-off dumpster. But in this scenario, the contaminated bin is wheeled right back into your facility typically without undergoing any cleaning protocols. In pathway two, contaminated bins are loaded directly onto a truck for transport and disposal. That same truck would have just delivered clean bins for the hospital's use. The final option is to consolidate waste into cardboard boxes or totes for transport and disposal. But just like pathway one, the contaminated bin is returned to the facility without undergoing any cleaning protocols. Among the options available, Pathway 2 is the only method which avoids wheeling dirty bins back into the facility, thus avoiding preventable cross-contamination and infection control risk. Now that we've previewed what the flow of waste looks like, the next step is to map it out in your specific facility. This mapping exercise is critical for identifying inefficiencies and potential infection risks. Ask yourself the following questions. How many times is waste touched? Are there opportunities to remove waste containers from patient rooms? Are there waste handling steps that can be consolidated? Are effective infection control practices being followed at every step of the process? Proactive remapping of waste flow and infection control protocols can have a significant impact on reducing contamination risk and improving staff labor efficiencies. Ultimately, the impact is realized not only in improved safety and compliance, but in driving higher standards of patient care and patient satisfaction. Consider your hospital waste management practices. What size container is appropriate for the waste being generated? 
what type of container is appropriate for the waste being generated. How can I get the containers as close to the point of generation as possible? How does container positioning impact waste segregation? Reduce the number of container exchanges in each patient room. Reduce visibility of waste being transported through facility corridors. Improve HCAP scores by removing waste from patient rooms. Reduce patient interruptions. Remember, what you can measure, you can manage. How waste is categorized and disposed of will directly impact your bottom line. Ask yourself, are your waste volumes increasing or decreasing? Are you over-categorizing non-hazardous pharmaceutical waste as hazardous waste? Is your current vendor auditing containers to assess opportunities for improvement? Do you get clear waste stream reporting from your current vendor? If you're not sure how to answer any of these questions, it might be time to conduct a comprehensive waste audit. By the time waste reaches your loading dock, it's too late to impact your costs. Cost reductions happen within the four walls of the hospital. Are you ready to make a change? Explore reimagined waste management with Daniel's Health.